What's up guys? Um, today is going to be a uh, tutorial, or not not a tutorial, what the hell, I've been shooting too many tutorials. Just a, like a review, I guess, or something, a rundown, whatever the hell you guys want to call it, of the Dell Power Edge 1750. Um, so, this is obviously just, uh, it's, it's an older model server. Um, it's probably the oldest server that I have, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is the oldest server that I have. I have two of these. The other one's right now running in the closet, you can probably hear it in the background. Yep. That's the fan running. Um, it's a really old server, but these things are actually pretty damn reliable. They're very reliable, actually, and they're very nice to have. Um, not the most powerful server in the world. In fact, you probably wouldn't be running these for a lot of heavy applications today. But these one really great for just, you know, small websites, Apache servers, mail servers, stuff like that. They're really, really nice. Um, so uh, I use them a lot for just web servers. I have one running right now for... But the website that I'm developing I had for the tutorial series and uh, it's also running my email server and stuff like that so I'll go ahead and take a peek at the front of it let's go ahead and look at the front in detail so um, this uh, there's your power button so it has the power button power light then you have your two uh, gigabit network uh, lights right there to show you the activity on those hard drive activity light uh, I think I already said the power button USB 1.1, uh, it is 1.1, not 2.0. Uh, that kind of sucks because it's very, very, very slow. If you ever hook a flash drive up to it, it's going to take a year and a half to move something like 100 megabytes or something. It's ridiculously slow. And if you're trying to boot operating systems off a of flash drive, my god, it takes forever. So, and by the way, if you guys want to load operating systems off a of flash drive, the BIOS on this server does not do it, so you have to use like um, other pieces of software like Plop Boot Manager and boot it off a of CD or Floppy. I just boot Plop off a of Floppy. That will allow me to boot a USB. So that's how I load operating systems onto these servers. Kind of a pain. Really nice part is the VGA port on the front. Also, I did a tutorial series on the the uh, SC1425, and that's another thing I kind of miss on the, uh, the Simple Computer series. VGA port on the front is great love having those there's your little indicator light button there's the indicator light so that's basically to indicate this server in a rack if you have a ton of these and you want to work on it you start on the front and you go to the back and you go holy crap which one was I working on that's what that button there's for then your um, your warning light for anything whatever the hell it might be if a power supply is going out sir a hard drive is going out to a uh, high temperature or whatever that'll start flashing and then you can go into the system's diagnostics and stuff and find out more of what the hell's wrong with it. But that's just to tell you something's wrong with your server. And then there's that mystery button that's on all the servers, the Dell servers, that I have no clue what it does. But um, there's an optical drive. This is just a CD drive, not a DVD drive. So you can't load operating systems off a of DVD, which sucks. So you, I normally load it off a of flash drive, which I just explained the problem with that. But it's got a, a optical DVD or CD drive. Um, it's got a floppy drive. Um, yes, that shows you kind of how old it is. It's sporting the floppy drive. Um, which, believe it or not, I like I said, I use that to boot into USB. <clears throat> Three hard drives. These are SCSI hard drives. This server is sporting just 36 gig drives because, like I said, it's a web server, so it doesn't really need that much memory. And they're 15,000 RPM drives. Uh, 80 pin so there's three hard drives you can run sorry about that guys um, someone called me and I'm shooting this video on my iPhone if you couldn't tell from the crappy quality but um, yeah so anyways you can run uh, the hard drives in however you want you can run it in uh, RAID uh, 0 to add them all together RAID 1 or RAID 5 um, of course obviously with three discs I'm running RAID 5 and they are all 36 gig uh, hard drives. So um, that's it for the front. There's nothing really magical about the front. Oop. And if you ever wonder why there's so many damn holes in my bed, that's why right there. Because I do stuff like that all the time. Always working on my bed. Okay. Take a peek at the back. So the back has... Um, it's got a serial port, another VGA. It's got the, um, the DRAC access. So um, it, that's how you can connect to the DRAC that's actually built on the motherboard and then the, the actual DRAC card is way up front so that's not the DRAC card but that is to connect to the DRAC card um, PS2 for keyboard mouse um, 
gigabit ethernet, gigabit ethernet, two of them. And then, um, so we have the button again and the, the light. Actually, there there's the button. And then there's another, there's a plug there so that you can actually control the light with another external source. No one ever uses that. But anyways, that's the light just like on the front, the indicator to tell which one you're working on. Again, that USB 1.1. So there is no USB 2.0 on here. Uh, there's two PCI slots. So you can get a PCI slot for USB 2.0, which it is probably worth doing. But um, I've just never gotten around to it because most of the file transfers and stuff I do obviously is through the network because it's a server. The only time I ever load files on this is for like operating systems and stuff. And then uh, I think this is an external SCSI. Uh, so that's cool for if, if you want to have external SCSI, but those are really expensive and no one ever uses that. So you're probably never going to end up using that, but you might. Um, two, two PSU power supplies, um, IEC connectors um, for the redundant power supplies. So that's the back of the unit. So let's go ahead and open this unit up. I'll turn it around here. So to open it up, you just go to the front here. Um, and next to the optical drive right here, there's a button. It's really nice. This is the easiest server I have to open up. So you just push the button. And then you just lift this up, and there's your two power supplies. Then you lift up the cover, right in there, and that's it. So no screws, no bolts, nothing. It's very easy. Um, so that's the server as a whole right there, guys. Um, and we'll go real quick and explain, do a little rundown. So again, it's not, you know, the specs on these aren't the greatest. They aren't the latest and greatest servers. They are pretty old. Um, so that's what I'm saying. You're not going to use these for like heavy applications, but for web hosting and whatnot, it's great. Um, here's the actual uh, little diagram itself. It just kind of explains everything. Um, you know, let me see if I can just go ahead and get a close up of it real quick, just for you guys. If you guys want to pause the video and take a look at it, go ahead. But I'm just going to go ahead and explain everything myself as well. Um, let's see if we can focus it a little bit better. Anyways. That's it, guys. And um, so here it is. There's the uh, power supplies right here. They are, you know, hot swapping. So you can just pull these guys out just like this. They're modular, very easy. They just slide in and slide out. So there's oh, two of those, one here, one here. Um, redundant power supplies, so that's great. Um, the lighting's starting to suck here. But anyways. We'll go ahead and get down in here. There's the um, drag card down there, which I have a video on how to install that as well. Um, your backup battery. So we have uh, five fans here, just like this. The, this is a, a rather loud server. It is one of the louder servers that I have. Um, I think it's louder than a 2950, just just because of the fact that, I don't know, it's a small one use server and the fans just are very fast fan here, fan here, so we have a total of, god, what, um, seven fans in this server, and then, um, there's the, uh, I think these are the north bridges, or south bridges, I don't even know what the heck these are, to be honest with you, I don't know what's what in this server, but here's the two, um, CPUs, dual core, um, I think these are 1.8, these are 1.8 gigahertz, or maybe they're 2 point, no, I don't think they're 2.8, actually, they are, um, yeah, 2.8 gigahertz right there. So these are 2.8 dual core Xeons. Um, uh, so there's, I mean, they're not really intense processors, but they do for a lot of stuff, especially like I said, web hosting. Uh, this server is just sporting um, four gigs of RAM, two one gig sticks, and it has four RAM slots. Um, let's go ahead and check it out. I think. Uh, I'm not sure what the heck's under here. I think this might be the north bridge, actually, because it gets very, very hot, and it's got a little funnel around it. That's probably most likely the north bridge right there. It gets This thing cooks when it's running. It gets really hot. It'll burn you if you touch the heat sink under there. So um, that's probably the north bridge, and it's right next to the processors. Anyways, um, then uh, over here, it looks like this is a lot of like power rails and stuff like that. Probably uh, does power regulation. There's a lot of huge uh, power fets and stuff on there. Then you have your two uh, PCI card slots, um, one right here, one right here, and they just pop in right there. So there's your PCI slots. That's pretty much it. 
about, guys. There's really nothing else to the server. It's a very, very simple server. Um, I mean, it's a great server, like I said, for like small applications and stuff like that. Um, I, let me go ahead and maybe I'll fire it up here in a second. We can show you guys what it sounds like when it fires up. Because you probably want to hear it. But it is a, this is a louder server. Um, and I mean, I can't think of anything that I'm missing. There's really nothing else. Uh, the board can be removed pretty easy if you just pull all this crap out. There's these little, all the little blue terminals. You just unscrew them. So you don't need any like tools or anything to take this apart. Everything's very modular and easy to replace. Very quick to replace stuff. The fans just pop out. You can pull out the whole fan assembly just like this. I mean, there's all your fans right there. Everything's very modular and easy to get to. Um, the power supply is obviously... Uh, the hard drives are easy to get to from the front. Everything's great. So um, that's pretty much it just for this server. Very simple. Um, and we'll go ahead and uh, get into the uh, pa powering it up. I forgot to mention that there is a... Uh, hard drive uh, RAID card on here. I think it's either built in the motherboard or that's probably what this guy is right here, this little RAID card and there. It looks like it might be that. But um, it does have a RAID controller on it, a dedicated RAID controller. So um, it's not software or anything. It's a dedicated RAID controller. All right, guys, and just to um, reveal the mystery behind it, I had to take a peek. And this is the RAID card, uh, just to let you guys know. Um, I never actually took a look at this because it's always been covered up and I just never really, I just ignored it because I never had to touch it. But this is the RAID card right here and it is under here. I actually uh, pulled it out. So you can see right there it says, see if I can get in on that RAID right there. So this is the RAID controller. Um, and uh, it's got this little uh, connector here, just sort of like the DRAC connector up front, which I have a video on installing the DRAC card in this. So, um, it's basically just like that, a little bit smaller connector. Here's the actual RAID card itself. So, I mean, you probably have, like, some, you know, RAM and a processor and just, you know, simple stuff like that. But it is dedicated RAID card, so it's not like, you know, um, software or anything. So it's a really nice uh, thing about these servers is the dedicated RAID cards. Um, it's one of their older models of the RAID card. I'll show you guys the RAID card in my 2950 and stuff when I do the video on that, but it's a lot more complex than this. But uh, that's the RAID card, so just basically has the connector right there, four little uh, plastic clips to hold it down. I'll go ahead and we'll throw it in there real quick. So if you guys were ever wondering how you put a RAID card in here, here's how you do it. Here's the RAID card installation video along with the tutorial of the server. Push down the two back ones, boom, boom. Go to the front and push down the front ones. And you have to push down with a good amount of force because you have to also, you know, push the connector into the socket as well. And it actually looks really cool. Dang, look at all that. That looks really awesome. And then you have your cover um, just like this. And that goes over that. And you basically just throw it over. It snaps on just like that. Or, you know, anyway. I don't know. It, it snaps on there just like that, and that's the cover to the uh, RAID card. So that's pretty much it for the RAID card. Now we'll go ahead and power the server on. All right, guys, so I have one PSU plugged in. I'm not going to plug both of them in. It might run a little bit louder than usual if there's one PSU going, just because usually if anything goes out in this, whether it's a fan or a PSU, usually the fans tend to speed up a little bit. So um, we'll go ahead and power it on. I have it plugged in and let's listen to it. It might be too loud for me to talk. So here we go. So um, it is pretty loud. It will probably calm down here in a second. Maybe. Maybe. Sometimes they take a while to slow down. There it goes. And that's its normal running speed all the time once it gets going. It never really gets quieter than that. Um, it might seem quite loud because it's open, so let's go ahead and close it real quick. And that's it. That's as quiet as it gets. Um, oh, there it is. It gets pretty loud. I'll go ahead and shut it down now. But um, it gets, it can get very, very, very loud. Um, but normally, what it was just running right there when it quiet, when it got quieter, that's its normal operating sound. So um, they are a rather loud server. Um, you can 
throughout the whole video, you can probably hear the one in the background. That is a 1750 running in my closet. But, um, so, I mean, they're, they're good little servers. Very, very reliable. Um, they can do simple tasks, like I said, web hosting, email, basic stuff like that. Um, but that's pretty much it for this, guys. Um, they're not really good for data servers. That'd be my 2950. Because they, you know, the hard drives aren't that big or anything, and you can't put too many hard drives in them. But they're really good for web servers and email. So that's it, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, or not this tutorial, but this uh, little overview rundown of the 1750. If you guys have any more questions or whatever, or anything you want to know about it, shoot me an inbox or a comment, email, whatever you guys want to know, and I'll go ahead and make a video or just reply to your comment. Um, that does it for this one, guys, and have a good one.